Ain't nobody smooth like me. I don't flash see notes, that's too high key. Keep it all down low, that's who I be. Levitating on the stage when I move my feet. All right, look, good guy, didn't know that he can move. What's up, guys? Yeah. Before we jump into today's episode, we are super happy to announce our partnership with the Dip Alternative, the original CBD pouch. Canadips. Canadips is the nation's leading tobacco and nicotine free dip. It helps you quit the bad stuff, but provides you with a discreet and fast acting CBD dosage on the go. Canadips are the ultimate discreet dose. You got no smoke, you got no smell, allowing you to throw one in on the field, on the golf course, in the weight room, or whether you're just looking to kick back and relax. No more playing sneak and chew with your family. Step up your dip game and chew on all the all natural product made from the hills of Humboldt County, California, brought all the way to you guys here in Minnesota. So head to CanadipCBD.com, use our code PCG for 20% off your entire order and evolve your dip game with the original CBD dip pouch, Canadips. You're not sure what to try? Canadips has got you covered with their original Cali Roll and it gives you all five core flavors to help you find the right one. So again, head to CanadipCBD.com, use that code PCG for 20% off your entire order. And with that, let's head to today's episode. Attention! We have teeing off at hole number one. Not the South Polis, but not the North Polis, but the Mickey Polis! And teeing off with him is his trusty sidekick, who is pointing to the Southwest, but also not sure of cardinal directions, Paul Johnson! Welcome everybody, back to episode 14. It sounds so weird to say we're, we're already halfway through our double digit podcast. Episode 14, thank you so much for everybody for tuning in. We are carrying this week over from last week a little bit. So obviously our live PGA merger, uh, the conversation went on and we filled the whole podcast with uh, with talk about that, but I felt like that was necessary. Well, and there's still more to talk about, honestly. I mean, it's... There's it more developments happening all the time. So I, the day the podcast came out, they made even another change from what, what it was, and we'll jump into that. But so we're going to carry over uh, into the Minnesota Vikings. We're going to start off with our usual top five of our slang terms. And for the first time ever, our slang terms are all made up yes. by yours truly. And we had a lot of fun. We played golf today, which in a Minnesota day, it's a Minnesota night now. You can see it's a little bit different than our usual studio, but... I want to be outside. It's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. We can't go inside at this time. 73 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. It's a perfect little evening. So we figured we'd bring you guys outside with us. Played golf pocket. today, had lots of slang terms developed. We were on, we had a creative mindset. You could not- And it was within it the was, first yeah. five holes. We had a lot of- It was of, just yeah. shot after shot. Which, is that a good thing? Does that mean that we were playing bad? <laughs> no, uh, no we, I mean, playing pretty good. We ended, yeah. we ended well. I think yeah. the, the, score card, the scorecard was great. It was a 78 today. Um, you were 84. 84, yeah. Six stroke difference, which is Seems like it usually ends like the five to ten range, maybe. Well, if we go uh, by how many inches taller he is than me, and that's about right. So it's so kind of a kind of a wash. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Let's so we do it. We had a great day on the golf course. Came up with some slang terms for you guys. Then we're gonna hear from Canada Dips, which is now this is episode three. They've been sponsoring the channel, which we also uh, made use of on the golf course today. We did. Yep. We we uh, tried a new uh, a new flavor we hadn't tried yet. Yep. So we'll uh, kind of give those the night and next week you'll hear how those were. We'll give you a little review how they were. We should. Because it was a new style that we hadn't tried yet. So it's it was good. Yeah, good. Good public course golf day. Right? Yeah. 75 degrees, sunny, lots of good play. Yeah. yeah. Now it's time for our top five slang, slang terms. terms. Made up style. Ooh, nice, I like that. All right, number one this week happened, first hole, yep. my second shot. <laughs> yep, I a, remember that one. a big round sand trap. It was lighter brown sand on the outside. The inside had a little bit of a darker, it looked like it was wet. <laughs> <laughs> but it did, right? <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah. It was a darker shade. <laughs> yep. And then right in the middle of that was a perfect little white spot. <laughs> it white was a perfect ball. little ball. From you. my golf ball. Yeah. It was in the middle of the sand and it looked just like a breast. Yes. So number one this week, PJ, is well we kinda just told them. Yeah, well, but you I can still explain it again. So but, PJ, yeah. tell the people about a titty. Yeah, well, hey, you've heard him say it, but um how many times have you hit it into the 
sand mm -hmm. and there's that little darker spot. Not very often, but when it happens, you should celebrate it because it's a titty. It looks that, that's the number one. like yeah. the perfect titty. Yeah. Well, we both looked at each other and said, that was a, a boob. I mean, and what happened is all of a sudden we started thinking about that. Yeah. And you know what happened next was number two this week, which is firework. Fireworks were in the sky, thinking yes. about yeah, yeah. One. So well, PJ, know. tell the people about a firework. So once again, another one of your shots. Yep. Which, you know, second unique, hole. You, unique. Usually, my shots are the ones that generate all this negative stuff. Right. Although it wasn't a negative shot. No. You're, you're, no, two, actually, it landed really well in the yeah, green. It yeah. Your number was, two is a firework. So a firework. So we've done a lot of like you know pitching wedge, flop shot type of thing. Gets a lot of elevation. Mm -hmm. You know, super up in the sky. But then it usually just kind of goes straight and falls down. Yeah. And it kind of looks like a one continuous arc. Yep. Well, a, a firework is where it goes up a certain kind of. It almost like, like a, it hits the apex. It goes faster up. Yeah. But then slowly falls down. And it, it falls kinda down in kind of a, a different direction. A falling different yes. direction. Which is like a firework bursting and then kind of falling, falling down. down to the ground. And so we both, you know, that, that's a firework. Your second shot was it a second shot or? Was it was. It yeah. was the second hole. My second shot. Second shot. Yep. 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 So, so that's a firework. So whenever you hit a, a firework shot, it's straight up in the air, but it's got to kind of trail off slower, or give the impression that it's trailing off yep. slower. Off a to different one direction. direction. A yes. Yep. Yes. So wind pushing it or whatever it may yeah. be. But well, a cool spot to see a firework is on a beach. Which number three this week is beach party. PJ, tell the people about a beach party. Well, a beach party is what Minnesotans dream about for nine months out of the year until oh, we get to yeah. the three months where we can do it. Yep. A beach party is in the in the sand trap. Um, and typically it's when more than one ball joins ends the sand. Up in the you know, sand trap. And that's, now we got a beach party. Have a little beach yeah. party, beach party. You know, before you get to the dance floor, you gotta have the beach party. You do. You know, and then, well, because that's like outside of the dance floor. And then, yep. you know, then they get on the dance floor eventually. So, so they go from the beach you start party. from once, to the, one party to the after party. Kind of and thing. then the after party includes the dance floor. Exactly, there you go. So, okay, here's one for you. If you're going to an after party, you're probably dressed Pretty formal. Well, you know. It's probably after a wedding, you're dressed formal. Well, Last week, beforehand, you were dressed pretty casual <laughs> for casual water. Yeah. <laughs> this week, you're dressed pretty formal for formal water. So number four this week is formal water. PJ, tell the people about formal it. Formal water is when you go to a fancy place and they give you water with a lemon in it. No, no, no. 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 But in golf, uh -huh. formal water. So casual water last week, we talked about how, um, you know, it could be the, the storm that produced some water and the ball goes in it and you get to move your club or your ball out a club's length or whatever else away from it because it's not water that's supposed to be on the course. Yep. So casual water. But we also made a joke about how if you have to go to the bathroom, that could be also casual water. Well, yep. formal water, you you guys all know at golf courses, people get married. Yeah, There's like the, at Wedgwood tonight, there yeah, was a there huge was, wedding. Yeah. So it could be at a church, but then the, um, you the, know, the, the re dance, reception, reception and all that stuff. Is that, is I got that, married at Wedgwood. Yeah, well, congratulations. Hey, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. Well, nice to meet your wife yeah, earlier. Yeah, no, yeah, right? We've been friends for a lot of years. I know Long, long, is. long, yeah. long time. Yeah, well, but anyways, when people get married on a golf course, sometimes they take pictures out on the golf course because yep. it's beautiful. You know, why wouldn't you? Good, very picturesque. Picturesque for, yeah. for uh, you know, the wife is proud of that. She mm -hmm. wants good pictures. So you go out there, and let's say you have to go to the bathroom. Which what do you do? Nature calls. You're what dressed, do you do? You're dressed in your suit. You you're have done to up. You're go find a tree. And that is formal water because you're wearing formal outfit and you're going to the bathroom. Yeah. On the course, formal water. Okay, casual water last week, formal water this week. No one got it. This reek? You this got formal water this week. So, <laughs> so number five this week is laundry day putt. PJ, tell the people why we call it a laundry day putt. A laundry day putt because uh, anybody out there can see the line from the putt to the hole. Just like in laundry day, usually you're not wearing your best undies. If wearing you're wearing your, your yoga Sunday. pants on a Sunday, on a laundry la Sunday, a laundry day could be a Sunday. Yeah, could a laundry be. day. Wearing your not so your workout special, pants, you're gonna see those lines there, and you, you know you ask uh, like on uh, che Chevy Chase on uh, Christmas vacation, you can't see the line, can you, Russ? Well, this in this case you can see the line, and so we call this a laundry day because laundry day typically that's your last pair of underwear. Well, you well, get them out of the bottom of the drawer. They're the big I mean, bloomer. We're not talking about us <laughs> necessarily, but we're talking about females. But I mean, we know that laundry day exists 
we are married. It under, it we under, know that this we happens. We understand it. Yes, and so when you can see the line, you know it's, it's laundry. It's, day. Not, it's not. It's not. It's so that's not. when you. That's when you run downstairs and change the laundry. Sorry, exactly. right, before we jump into the Minnesota Vikings talk, let's hear from our friends over at Canadips. Canadips is the nation's leading tobacco and nicotine-free dip. It helps you quit the bad stuff, but provides you with a discreet and fast-acting CBD dosage on the go. Canadips are the ultimate discreet dose. You got no smoke. You got no smell, allowing you to throw one in on the field, on the golf course, in the weight room, or whether you're just looking to kick back and relax. No more playing sneak and chew with your family. Step up your dip game and chew on all the all natural product made from the hills of Humboldt County, California, brought all the way to you guys here in Minnesota. So head to CanadipCBD.com, use our code PCG for 20% off your entire order, and evolve your dip game with the original CBD dip pouch, Canadips. You're not sure what to try? Canadips has got you covered with their original Cali Roll, and it gives you all five core flavors to help you find the right one. So again, head to CanadipCBD.com, use that code PCG for 20% off your entire order, and now back to the podcast. Kirkuset, we're gonna jump straight. Oh, I just farted. <laughs> we're gonna jump into some Minnesota Vikings talk, and we are gonna talk number one this week, we're gonna jump right into it, is Delvin Cook being cut. What do you think? Well, we can't afford him, and I think they're trying to clear space enough to, uh, to sign Jefferson. And I think with running backs, the way that they're valued in the NFL now, they just don't get the same emphasis. Nope. And I think that's the, the way the offensive you know strategy is involved. And I don't know if that'll ever like pendulum or like go back towards that. But right now, it's totally towards the passing game. Yeah. And Dalvin was a great blocker as well, so he's a, he's going to be missed. It's not like. I think people will say, well, we have Madison, we're okay, are still not understanding the value of Cook. Right. And I think... It Matt wasn't just yeah. running the ball. No. And Cook is faster than Madison. Madison's more of like a bruiser. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I just feel like we can't just say, oh, we have this backup running back. Would you say that about Jefferson? Oh, it doesn't matter. We have KK Osborne. Osborne. And nothing against Osborne, but... Yeah. You just put that comparison to Justin Jefferson and KJ Ajwar into yeah. a substantial difference. It is. And I, I don't know if it's that big of a difference between Cook and Madison with how much they affect the game. Yeah. So that's why I feel like, you know, it's it was inevitable, I guess. But Kirk says maybe we'll get him back. I don't know. Kirk I mean, might we, be. Yeah. We saved, what, $9 million by letting him go right now, right? And it sounds like he's going to be very patient and wait till he gets that eight, nine, ten million $10 million a year. And he wants someone who appreciates him, and I hope that that's not a backhanded comp, you know, comment towards yeah, the, the Vikings. Vikings because I think we appreciate him. It's just that we can't, with the salary cap the way it is, and we have an expensive quarterback, but not, not so much, not in the, but not not what it is now. I no, mean, it's, no, it's, it's, yeah. The reason, and we talked about this before, the whole reason that Kirk Cousins' contract is a big deal is because he was one of the first to get the guaranteed money. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that was such a new thing. It was outside of what Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers, nobody yeah. had guaranteed money. And I'll go out there and on a limb right now and say, I'd rather have Kirk Cousins than Russell Wilson. Oh, by a mile. I mean, look at the- Mile high. I, there are Garbage. some- yeah, Yes. There are some people that think Kirk Cousins is, regardless of what you think about him winning big games, if you put, and people say, well, just, stats don't matter. Well, they do because if you put all the stats side by side, he's better than a lot of quarterbacks. Does he need a great defense to help him? Of course he does. As does he need to any. have an offensive line who can block? Yes. But he's putting he's got he's got an all pro receiver because of what he's doing to get him open. Yeah. And to throw it to him. Yeah. Now we have Caleb Ad or Jordan Addison. And it, you know, without Dalvin Cook, like we were talking about before, I think it just changes the 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 mindset. I wonder if that guy from North Carolina, uh, McBride. Oh yeah, yep. Dwayne McBride. Wonder, yeah, I wonder if he comes up and he's more of a contributor. You know, yeah. he might be. And then uh, Kene Nwangu. Yeah. You know, he's more of a returner, but maybe he's got a spot on the, on the you know, maybe he's got In some gadget plays yeah. or whatever else. So I think there's still guys there, but you can't keep Jefferson without getting rid of Cook. And Jefferson is a once in a lifetime player when you look at what he's already done. Right. The Vikings would be stupid to say, here's a guy that's like, already going to be a ring of honor guy. I mean, he yeah. set pretty much all-time records the first three years in the league in different categories. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you're talking a generational, since Randy Moss type of 
player. And some 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 guys on uh, you know will will say, well, he you know trade him right now. He's at his peak. Get this, Stupid. get this, get this. And they're, they're thinking we can get by kind of like with you know an, enough mediocre to like great play. You know, get rid of him. Get a lot of draft picks. Get a better offensive line. Have you know mediocre receivers or get guys in the rookie contracts and win that way. And that can be one way to do it. And it seems like that's more of the trend right now with like trying to get a quarterback who's in a rookie contract. Yep. And the NFL needs to, be, needs to be thinking about that because that's what, is that what you really want in the NFL? Do you want to say, hey, you're only important until you get to year five or six and then we don't care about that you That we're done with you. So it, the NFL's got to think about that for the longevity of their, of their league yeah. and for the appreciation of the players. And for the record breaking, you know, for celebrating the talents and using the money, the money in in the NFL might backfire, right? And say, no, get rid of year six, Kirk Cousins or year six, uh, uh, who's the quarterback for the Eagles? Oh, Jalen Hurts. Yeah, get rid of, and then draft somebody new because, well, we we used him up, we right. used his it's cheaper contract up. Let's now get another guy, and before you know it, no quarterbacks ever get pl- get paid. No and players don't get paid. Right. So that's a whole other can of worms. I didn't think I would bring up but I yeah. mean, with Dalvin Cook he wants to get paid but he wants to get paid enough where he's appreciated for the amount of hits and stuff he takes I think the Vikings can't afford that no I don't think they can and I I think it's probably one of those it's not necessarily making the you know just the decision of like ah oh, we're not we're not gonna pay you because we don't think you're good enough I no, think it's, it's we not think that. you're good enough that we can't pay you what you are probably worth. Exactly. We can pay you the five million dollars, mm-hmm. and I know that was kind of the range where Cousins had said he's hoping he comes back. And I guess that's what we had to kind of offer Delvin yep. to restructure. Well, who knows though? Well, because who knows? Because we're not the only team in the NFL that also understands the the value of a court of a, of a running back right yeah. now, and so for him to wait it out, he might not get a better situation with. Team wise, yeah, for the long, you know, for a record and trying to get it, you know, advance farther so that his his work and his hits and that he absorbs is for the betterment, yeah, because he's going to get to the playoffs. You know, he gets signed by somebody else, gets the money. Is that what he really wants at this point yeah. in your career? I don't like, know. You've made the money you're gonna you're gonna make. You're set. Your kids yeah. are set. Like now, yeah. Is it is it all just about the money? Maybe it is, and maybe that's his just plan. like live live in PGA. We we're talking about that. Is money yeah. everything, or is that or is there something to the team atmosphere? Because we've we've heard a lot of good things about the Vikings, like atmosphere. There was there was a uh, poll last year that talked about the Vikings being the best, like like essentially culture. Culture, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't know who that polled, but it was broadcast. I mean, it was published published yeah. on, on the. Yeah. So, I mean, it so was it was people from every NFL team. So I don't know. Yeah. How they decided been, that, uh, but yeah. Concessions were. I, who knows? But yeah, it. Uh, so it's really cool to see. Um, I don't know. I'm hoping that Madison can kind of take that. We haven't really seen. You know, he started what five games in the and last he's, year he's, or two. He's good. He did well. Yeah, 670 yards, a couple t- five touchdowns in six games. And I, b- believe it or not, I thought before this season, I thought he was the one that was going to be gone. I figured for sure that you'd trade him while his value's high. Yeah. I, I figured they were going to figure out something with Delvin. Like he obviously thinks he's a lot of money. Thinks he's worth a lot of money. The Vikings think. You know, a different number. Um, so, yeah, I would have guessed the same thing, where you take advantage of Madison, not yep. quite breaking onto the scene yet, but now you save you save quite a bit of money so far. Now that brings us to Daniel Hunter. Well, you know? talk about, we're talking about money. You were, you know, the amount of money and what you think you're worth. And that's where I wonder what Daniel Hunter and his agent, are they thinking he's worth a contract that what his sample size of, of work thus far does it really equal what he wants or what he's deserves and money is a huge thing in the nfl because they're putting themselves in harm's way yeah i mean let's face it it's the most violent sport um the guys could be killed or concussion any i hit. mean and even yeah. just take the head stuff where you look at the demar hamlin stuff last year yeah like, getting hit the right time where you have a heart stop chest has stopped his heart collapsed on the field i'm sure you guys saw about that so but, you, i mean it's yeah. it's a big and as much as you want to be like, well, it's their choice to play football. Like that's a lot of people saying that are the ones that religiously sit down every Sunday and watch a game. 
Yep. So could you imagine if there was no football? Well, and that's what the market is. If we're going to make the market be this way, then we should be, as consumers, not willing to pay for it. For it. What we are, though. So yeah. that's what's making the market there. Yeah. And so we are just as guilty as anybody else of saying that this, these players are worth this amount of money. And football is huge in our country. So I think Daniil Hunter is waiting to see if he can get that amount of money he wants. And he's been injured a lot. And I think the Vikings, on their, like, going... Going for the Vikings, like what's, what's what's going for them, the positive side of this, is that they know that Daniil's not been uh, healthy a lot. Yeah. And what kind of amount of money is he is he going to attract? And so they're kind of like, well, go out and see how much money. I mean, I don't think you're going to get that money. No, and not he at might, all. he might go somewhere. I, I just feel like um, he needs to maybe realize where he's at. His potential might be like this amount of money. Oh, yeah. His, but, he, but he can't. It's unfortunate he had a neck injury. Yes, right. that's unfortunate. But part of it. It's part of his, his earnings. It does not mean there are plenty of Super Bowl champions and in, in, in Hall of Famers in, in the NFL that did not make the amount of money that they thought they should make. Yeah, I'm sure every single one of but them. But the, all of them are rich and have ha happy lives. Right? <laughs> well, I don't know that for sure, but I'm guessing. You that would assume. We'd assume so. Yeah. You're a quarterback in the NFL, you make all the money you ever need. As a guy that's one of those, like, that's. Seems like it'd be a, a pretty good deal. Well, it's, it's your it's your mistake to to lose it, which can happen. And I'm not trying to say that um, people who've lost money are bad people. I'm just saying, if you're given this amount of money, even if you're not the top played ath top paid athlete, I don't think you're hurting for it. Yeah. And I also think there's something to be said to be on a team that's competitive and not just get the amount of money you want because we've seen it before. People already blame the Vikings when we signed Kirk Cousins. You already said this before. Yeah. Guaranteed contract big cap hit to us oh we can't sign anybody else well all these players are looking for that money every single one of them. so whoever does it you can't have your cake and eat it too when when jefferson gets signed or everybody gonna say oh now we can't afford this or are they gonna be like oh no jefferson's awesome yeah i think they're gonna i don't think they're gonna be fair the same, there's not gonna be the same amount of people that complain no to not at all and cousins I absolutely don't think so. not yeah no i so. think cousins just kind of naturally has that I mean, he's got that stigma around the league as just kind of a pushover, if you will. And so it's, I don't know, it's unfortunate. I kind like of the him. nerd. Yeah, he's yeah. kind of the, yeah. Analytical, too analytical. Yeah. Yep. Not not go with the flow. He's got to be too calculated. You're right. Yeah. Stupid. So, yeah, I mean, we hope we, I hope we keep Daniil Hunter because I think he's an athletic specimen. But yep. I also think if he's gone, less headache. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's just another worry. I mean, I'm sure you're going to find I mean, he's a great DN slash linebacker, where, depending on where he lines up. Uh, but, I, I mean, there's a lot of Daniel Hunters in the league. Like you said, there's a lot of guys that think they're worth a lot more than they should be, and they're Hall of Fame players. Well, it reminds me of what Cat and Nas Reed. So Cat, Cat on the on the Timberwolves, not not to change the subject I'm a here, big but. I'm a big Timberwolves guy, but this just absolutely drives me up the, the wall. Well, if, if Cat, but what Cat brings with the amount of money he's getting paid, is that much more than what Nas Reed brings? With no. How much money he's getting paid, and with star athletes in any sport, you can really tell that that player is the star getting paid the most. I think if somebody doesn't know anything about a team and they come watch it, they can they can say, oh yeah, that guy's the highest paid. Yeah. But I think if someone came and watched the Timberwolves, and they did not know our players' salaries. And they watch an entire game. I'm not sure they would say that Cat or Nas are more important to the team. I could make the argument as a avid basketball fan, and even battling through some of these Timberwolf seasons, the the amount that Nas Reed brings to a game, it's a completely different threat than Carl Anthony Towns does. Yep. And Towns plays like he's a two guard. Towns plays entitled. Yeah. He thinks he's entitled to fouls. He's entitled to the shots. Nas plays. Well, it's because he's going to be, people yeah. are going to assume when he's done, they're going to say, he when he retires from basketball, people are going to say he changed the game. I wouldn't talk about yourself that way until you've made multiple all-star games. At and least. Yeah. At Which least is what a he, little he, bit. You're, you're quoting from him when you said that. <laughs> yeah, that was his quote directly on the Pat Bev podcast. And it's... <sighs> I like Cat, I like the Timberwolves, but we can't seem to get out of our own way. 
Like and bring you negative stepping. attention as we do it. So all the national media loves to get, you know, harp on the Timberwolves. But our players, like Cat, don't help our cause. A player like Nas would. Yeah. Nas goes in there and he plays like he's not entitled to the ball, not entitled to a shot. But he takes the open shot and he plays hard. He dribbles better than Cat. He dribbles like it. You know, a yeah. six two point guard. I mean it's I don't know how much difference I mean Cat can shoot from the outside better than Nas. For sure. And I wouldn't I would I wouldn't I would kinda not guard Nas from three if he's gonna take like six of them. He might make two of them. Right. Good for you. Right. Cat might make four of them. So that's yeah. the difference. But I still you look at the amount of money that Cat's owed, you're you I I don't think that anybody I don't think Tim Conley, I don't think anybody admits that the Rudy Gobert trade was a bit uneven in that, you know, what we gave up versus yeah. what we got in return. Granted, there was a lot of weird injuries this year. I, I wouldn't say that the Rudy Gobert experiment was a fail by any means yet. I think we got to give it for sure another season. But nobody's going to admit that the Gobert trade didn't hasn't worked out yet. So you're not trading Rudy. Rudy's not going anywhere. Well, no, you that'd be a, that'd be a, like a yeah. You'd have to if he if he goes somewhere, then the rest of the, the coaches go somewhere. You, they have to. Yep. So Rudy's not going anywhere. You're gonna give Ant anything he wants. Yep. You're pretty much gonna give Jaden anything he wants. Yeah, that's and, that's one of the best drafts in our. That was amazing. Yeah, both those guys in the same draft. Yeah. And when you look at the amount of time Cat was out last year. Yeah. We actually played really well. We were fourth in the West for quite a long time. Nas Reed played great as a come in as a four slash five behind Gobert. Mm -hmm. He played amazing. And I would say we were better off that way. So you look at one of the rumors right now is from Portland for Anthony Simons, the number three overall pick, which is probably going to be Scoot Henderson, and then a future first round pick. Yes, it's not the hole that Gobert got, and you could make the argument Cat's better than Rudy is. They're completely different players, but because of their size, people will make that assumption. You're not going to get what you paid for for Rudy out of Cat. Sorry. No. You're just not going to do it. It, it. it comes down to what you want for your focal point of your team, and I'm not sure that we can say that Ant is the future of the team if Cat is playing the same way that he is. Absolutely not. I think shooting guards and guard play, like got slashers, are more of the future. Yeah, I mean, I sure. know that Nick, you know, Pe you know, uh, Jokic is anomaly. He's, Were you going to say Pekovic? Yeah, it was Nikola Pekovic, but yeah, Jokic was. is Peck, unbelievable. Baby. He's, but not everybody has him, and I'm not sure if Cat is him. No, not but at I all. But I would say though that as far as who to compare him to, he's more like him than the other big men. I think he's less like Embiid and more like Jokic. For sure. But For I would sure. say he does not share the ball like Jokic. Nope. He can't pass like him. Mm -mm. He can shoot better than Jokic from the outside. But Jokic is better with his body control as he approaches a guy in the paint. Cat is already he, assuming he a foul. He doesn't think he's going to get fouled yes. every time. Cat assumes a foul when he gets anybody guarding him. Then he complains to the ref. And then they're doing, he's what everybody trying to do, the swipe through. You know, that's oh, Chris Paul's yeah. deal. Yep. And D'Lo, I would say, was pretty good at it. Yep. But you get Cat trying to do it. You're seven foot two. You're at 35 feet from the basket. I don't think Cat can give up that part of his game for the sake of Anthony Edwards. Mm -mm. So I think that's where you have the problem. I also just think def defensively, I don't know how much Cat provides because he gets so many off offensive fouls. He can't he be can't, aggressive can't, on defense. Yeah, he's already, if he gets two offensive fouls, that's already two fouls. He can only. Like he's only good for like one more foul for the half. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then he's down. He can't go back in. No. So and Nas Reed doesn't do that same stuff. He doesn't get offensive fouls. No. So the offensive fouls are kind of um, irresponsible. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's a pretty big detriment actually to his game because I think that was the whole intention of the Gobert trade is you were gonna have. Rudy's going to be the five. He's going to be the one in the middle mm -hmm. that can take some of those fouls away, blocking shots. Cat trying to swipe, you know, on, on defense when Cat's trying to block every shot. You know, he's picking up fouls there on top of his silly offensive fouls. So that was the whole intention with, you know, Rudy. But it's, I, I don't know, it's a weird year. I say you unload Cat. 
you you take the Trailblazers trade, get Anthony Simons. He can one of the best three point shooters in the league. Yep. First round pick, and then you got the first round pick this year, which is probably going to be Scoot Henderson at three. Charlotte doesn't really need him um, with Lamella Ball. But speaking of Charlotte, see Michael Jordan is trading or trading. Oh my God! Did you see Michael Jordan is selling his majority share of the Charlotte Hornets? I I did not see that. That that's very interesting. I wouldn't like MJ, the arguably the greatest player of all time, is been at the helm since I think it's been like thirteen or fourteen years. Yeah, two thousand ten maybe he bought him a majority stake. And you would assume that he's just going to make great basketball decisions, but sometimes it just doesn't work that way. You, you see it uh, with former athletes getting into the business side of basketball, you know, the ownership side, the, the decision-making side. You see it all the time. John Elway, Michael Jordan, um, you know, uh, Alex Rodriguez. You see guys that are, you know, buying stake into things. And well, you, shout out A-Rod with the yeah, Wolves. Yeah. Um, your nice fresh blood coming to the Timberwolves, and so yes. that's him and Mark Laurie. That might that might re attract Kevin Garnett back. Please, KG, Glenn Taylor's just bought out. Yep. Come back, get your jersey in the rafters. Yep. They just retired Sylvia Fowles' jersey for the Lynx into yep. the rafters. That's good. Uh, which is great. She, they got she more deserves it. than us. So that's the Wolves, yep. right? Mm -hmm. I was curious what they're going to do this year. I so saw they started off the year 0 and 6, but you got Caitlin Clark. And you have Paige Beckers, are pretty much the the two big ones. I don't know what Angel Reese is going to do. I don't. I'm sure she'll be eligible after next year. So you're pretty loaded uh, at the top half of the WNBA draft. Well, there but you go. The you get Caitlin Clark. Caitlin, Caitlin Clark's from Iowa. Iowa, and Paige Beckers is from Minnesota. You got two people that all. We always seem to get some hometown heroes. Maybe that's what we're trying to do. What's crazy though is now the Lynx have won I think like three or four in a row. So they were 0 and six. No, I'll keep tanking. And yeah. I would almost. Yeah, well, you can't make it known because you don't want to tank. I mean, I would players, never yeah. do that, but no. if I could I draft not. either one of those players, I would probably tank. Yeah. So. Oh, hello there. This looks a little different than our uh, putting mat in the studio. Because we figured because it's so nice outside, we play a game of PCG instead of tic-tac-toe, which is fine for with, because I lose tic-tac-toe every time anyways. So we're gonna play a little game of PCG. So enjoy. Uh, this uh, game is brought to you by Dadwear. It is socks and sandals right here. That's what you want to see. Short shorts, socks and sandals. Ladies love it. Okay. There it is. Yep. All right, the other one. Oh, sugar. Kobe. Nope. On the trailer. Nope. On the trailer. Oh. There he is. Mr. Sunday himself. Should have called Switch. Okay. Yeah. Well, there again. Call Switch. Ooh. Ah. Oh. What's that piece? P to P. Kobe. 
Uh, you gotta have your arm against the the pipe. Shoot it again. So, all right, here, so, so I'm gonna lose it. it. I'm making him prove it. Good job. Thank you so much for watching episode number 14 of the Public Course Golf Podcast. If you guys dig today's episode, please hit the thumbs up button. Hit the red subscribe button to not miss our episode next week. And with that, we'll catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.